For 16 years, she's fought to enhance Singapore's reputation. We were, you know, in a bad spot. Dealt with major global crises. I turned on the television, took one look and dashed with the embassy. And on her watch, a superpower turned toward Asia. This administration has certainly intensified the engagement with Asia. Now, as Singapore's ambassador to Washington prepares to head home, she's talking to us in this special edition of The Interview. If, as a former British Prime Minister once asserted, a week is a long time in politics, then 16 years in the realm of international diplomacy is an eternity. But that is how long Ambassador Chan Heng Chi has lived in Washington, D.C., representing Singapore's interests in a place that calls itself the most powerful city on Earth. 16 years, just think of it. When she got here, Bill Clinton was still in the White House. George W. Bush had just been sworn in as governor of Texas. Boris Yeltsin still ruled Russia. No one had ever heard of Vladimir Putin. And this television network, Channel News Asia. Yes, even we weren't around then. What a very long ride it's been. Did you ever think you would be here this long? No, not at all. When I came in 1996, I did not know I would stay for 16 years. The normal uh, stint for an ambassador, for the Singapore ambassador to the United States is six years, two terms. But it's been 16 years. It has indeed, and as Ambassador Chan prepares to pack up her office and head for home, her days are now filled with farewell appearances in Washington. She is the second longest serving ambassador in the US capital, and when she got here, the US relationship with Singapore was, well, under a cloud. Most Americans at the time associated Singapore with the case of Michael Fay, the American teenager sentenced in 1994 by a Singaporean court to four strokes of the cane for acts of vandalism. In the US, his case was front page news and a front page problem for Ambassador Chan. When I came in 1996, we were, you know, in a bad spot. The United States had not yet turned the page, and Michael Fay was still sort of lingering around, you know, on the sides of the stage. But I thought by the time I came, they were going to turn the page, but they would turn the page slowly. But what really did it was the Asian financial crisis. <laughs> Chaos on Asia's financial markets, she says, changed the storyline in the United States. Singapore, accused by the New York Times of engaging in medieval torture in the Michael Fay case, was soon perceived to be the solid, reliable hero of a very dark hour. The financial crisis of 1997 put the spotlight on Singapore as really a very good country. As the currencies of the region swooned, and as, you know, the uh, economies needed reform in so many of the countries in the region, it was very clear that in Singapore, our currency was strong and there was good corporate governance. And I think because of that, we stood tall. Was there a moment in 1997 when the Asian financial crisis occurred where you said, this is, this is the time, this is the moment when the bilateral relationship can change, or was it simply a matter of a, uh, of a steadily shifting dynamic? I was too busy to think about what is the opportunity. What I tried to do was really to fight the fire, you know, and it was getting bigger. And that's really what I was doing. But looking back, I can now have the advantage of hindsight history to say that's when the... the um, relationship turned. Ambassador Chan says then senior minister Lee Kuan Yew also played a big role in turning the relationship with the United States around. In November 1996, he accepted an award from the Nixon Center in Washington. It was the first high-level Singaporean visit to the US since the Michael Fay affair. No leader had been here during the Michael Fay couple of years, you know, because, you know, relationship was not that strong. 
suddenly, I think Americans realize that, hey, Singapore has really great strategic insight, and Lee Kuan Yew is Lee Kuan Yew. So I think that reminded them of our strengths. But you're a bit of a change agent yourself. There's this fantastic quote that you gave to a local newspaper here shortly after you had been appointed. You said, I'm anti-establishment and was a bit of a dissident before I was appointed ambassador. It came as something of a shock to me when I was offered the ambassadorship. Do you think your appointment was itself a harbinger of changes at home that were then going to feed through and change the bilateral relationship? Maybe I was the right person at the right time. And the strength and wisdom of the government was to find the right person for the job at that particular time. And I seemed to fit the bill. And uh, I was seen to be more independent and democratic administrations like that. So, um, you know, I thought that uh, when I came, uh, I was welcomed, but not immediately with the same warmth as now I am. I think, you know, there were steps. It was step by step, but it became better and better. When we come back, navigating a new chapter in American history, one prompted by the worst attack on America's interests since Pearl Harbor. Stay with us for more of the interview.